Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving redshift. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that the red absorption line for hydrogen has a wavelength of 656 nanometers. The absorption line is observed to have a wavelength of 669 nanometers on Earth for a distant galaxy. Part A says to calculate the redshift. Well, writing down what we know from the question, the redshift Z is what we're trying to find. We know that the observed wavelength here, which I'll call lambda OBS, is equal to 669 nanometers because that is the one that is observed from a distance. The rest wavelength, lambda rest, is equal to 656 nanometers. And so writing down our equation, we have Z equals lambda observed minus lambda rest divided by lambda rest. Substituting in those numbers, we have 669 minus 656 divided by 656 and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 0.02. And just a couple of things, so remember redshift doesn't have any units, so simply just a number is what we want for redshift, and we didn't convert nanometers into meters here. And the reason is we've got a ratio of wavelengths, so the numerator is in nanometers and the denominator is in nanometers. So that means the nanometers units would cancel out anyway, so it doesn't matter if you convert the nanometers into meters or not, but it saved us a bit of work not doing it. Part B says to find the velocity of the galaxy relative to the air. Earth. Well, we're trying to find the recessional velocity v. We know that the redshift z is 0.02 from part a, and c, the speed of light, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have z equals v over c. Remember, this is the definition of redshift in terms of the ratio of the velocities, and we can now rearrange for v by multiplying by c on both sides. So we end up with v equals z times c, and substituting in the numbers, we get 0.02 times c times 10 to the 8. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 6 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Part C then says, in what direction is the galaxy moving relative to the Earth? Well, we can say that since Z is positive, the galaxy must be moving away from the Earth. Question 2 says that a galaxy is moving away from the Earth at a velocity of 1.20 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Light of wavelength 450 nanometers is emitted from this galaxy. Calculate the wavelength of the light when detected and measured on the Earth. So what it's really asking us for here is the observed wavelength, lambda OBS. And the strategy for this question is that we first need to find Z and then lambda OBS. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find Z first. We know that V is 1.20 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, the recessional velocity, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, as always. So writing down our equation relating these variables, we have Z equals V over C. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1.20 times 10 to the 7 over 3 times 10 to the 8, and putting that into your calculator gives us a Z value of 0.04. We're not finished, but we can now use this answer for Z in finding lambda OBS, the observed wavelength. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find lambda OBS, we know the redshift z is 0.04 and the rest wavelength lambda rest is 450 nanometers. So writing down our equation, we have z equals lambda OBS minus lambda rest over lambda rest. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0.04 equals lambda OBS minus 450 divided by 450. And now if we want to get lambda OBS on its own, we need to cross multiply first of all to simplify this. So if we cross multiply 450 times 0.04 is equal to this side, then we get 18 equals lambda OBS minus 450 and then if we want lambda OBS on its own we need to add 450 to both sides so we end up with lambda OBS equals 468 nanometers and a quick check is to see that the observed wavelength is bigger than the rest wavelength which it should be for a galaxy moving away from the earth question 3 says that astronomers find a distant star and calculate the redshift to be 0.085 Part A says to find the velocity of the star relative to the Earth. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find what V is, the recessional velocity. We know that the redshift Z is 0.085, and C, the speed of light, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Writing down our equation now relating these variables, we have Z equals V over C, and rearranging for V again, we multiply both sides by C, so we get V equals Z times C. Substituting in our numbers now, we get 0.085 times 3 times 10 to the 8, and putting that into your calculator it should give you an answer of 2.55 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Part B says, in which direction is the star moving? Well, since Z is positive, the star must be moving away from the Earth. Remember, if Z had a negative value, that would indicate a star or a galaxy moving towards the Earth, i.e. blue shift. Lastly, question 4 says that the diagram below represents part of the emission spectra for the element hydrogen. Spectrum P is from a laboratory source, and Spectrum Q shows the equivalent lines from a distant star as observed on the Earth. 
So here's Spectrum P and Spectrum Q with the red shifted line. So they've increased in wavelength towards the red end of the spectrum. And there's our rest spectra, the rest wavelengths for Spectrum P. So part A says to explain why Spectrum Q is red shifted. Well, the reason for this is that the star is moving away from the Earth, so the wavelength of the light from the star has shifted towards the red or longer wavelength end of the spectrum. Part B says that one of the lines in Spectrum P has a wavelength of 656 nanometers. The equivalent line in Spectrum Q is measured to have a wavelength of 670 6 nanometers. Calculate the recessional velocity of the star. Well, in order to find the recessional velocity, we need to know what the redshift is first of all. So we need to find Z first and then V. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find Z. We know that the observed wavelength lambda OBS is equal to 676 nanometers. We know that the rest wavelength is 656 nanometers. And so writing down our equation, we have Z equals lambda OBS minus lambda rest over lambda rest. Substituting in the numbers, gives us 676 minus 656 over 656. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 0 0.03. And remember, we're not finished because we now need to use our answer for Z in our other equation for redshift that relates to the ratio of velocities. So writing down what we know from the question now, we're trying to find the recessional velocity V. We know the redshift Z is 0 0.03 and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have Z equals V over C. Rearranging for V, again, just like we've done before, we get V equals Z times C. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0 0.03 times 3 times 10 to the 8. And lastly, putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 9 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.